there, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. Lately, I have been feeling sort of homesick slash nostalgic for the American Southwest. I didn't exactly grow up in the Southwest. I grew up in the foothills of Colorado, but we definitely made a lot of trips down to the Southwest. We were very close to it, you know, visiting the uh, Four Corners area, Durango, Taos, New Mexico, uh, Flagstaff. We went through the petrified forest. We went, you know, and I've, and I've done like a lot of um, drive throughs done a lot of trips between Colorado and California via Route 66-ish and going through the Southwest. And I just, I have a lot of very fond memories of it. So I've been kind of missing that lately, and I think I've been missing it just because, for one, this is sort of the time of year when we would often get a little bit like, let's go somewhere, let's do something, this is sort of spring break time. And um, also just now that I'm in Massachusetts, I love Massachusetts, but it's a little bit harder <laughs> to get down to the Southwest, where before it was like I could go on just a little impromptu weekend trip and just decide one one day, like, you know what, I just want to go down to Taos and go down hang out there and then spend a night, spend two nights and come back up. And it was no big deal, but it's a little bit bigger a deal because now it's a multi-day excursion just to get down there, either that or a plane ride. Um, so, you know, I guess it just, it's further away and it feels further away and I've been missing the Southwest. So when I saw this tarot deck, I really had to jump on it. It's the Tarot Cats by Bunny D. There are a lot of cat tarots, tarot cats, tarot of the cats. <laughs> this is the Tarot Cats by Bunny D. And I haven't really seen this one on YouTube. There's one silent flip through of it, which I totally appreciate. And I definitely <laughs> watched that um, in, in preparation for, or in, 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 deciding process for getting the deck. Um, but yeah, I haven't really seen a lot of people have it or talk about it. I just found it randomly while I was browsing around on Etsy, and I want to give it its own little space here. So yeah, this is not an unboxing. I've already used it a couple of times, but I've put it back in order just for the sake of showing it off and flipping through it. And so let's get to it here. And I bring up this stuff about the Southwest, because this deck definitely has a Southwestern flavor. It takes place in the Southwest and just brings to mind a lot of very happy um, aspects of my childhood and nostalgic memories of, of um, visiting the Southwest and of living with my cats. That's sort of the other thing is I haven't had a pet cat in the, uh, since I was a kid, um, or, you know, since I was a teenager, and I really have been missing cats in my life. So this sort of satisfies both, both urges, both longings. There is no little white book or anything. This is just like a little one page thing that has a little bit about the deck, about using the deck and about the artist. It is Rider Waite Smith, so it's plenty easy to use. Um, I also really love that the artist, uh, has two cats, one of whom is named Taos. <laughs> Taos, New Mexico is just like a nice special spot for me. And, um, the, uh, creators from Bakersfield, California. So definitely as they describe it, the country desert city, definitely <laughs> accurate. So I'm just going to read this bit about this bit that says about the deck because I think it's really cute and really pretty. This deck in all its magic was born out of love of feline companions. I have seen and experienced what joy living with cats can bring. From the very simple expression of the slow blink to curling up with us when we are sick, cats bring wonder to the mundane and make our daily lives better. I wanted to give back to our cat mamas and papas and our curious little creature pals. Cats are daily magic and this deck is dedicated to their auras. Many of the cats within are ones that I know. I hope they can help guide your way with the most creative readings forever. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So, uh, this is the back. And I'll pop it out here. Um, just in terms of uh, card stock, deck specs, that sort of thing. It's regular tarot size. 
It's a little bit thick, but it's not impossible to riffle shuffle. It's a little bit tricky for me just because I have small hands. Um, if you have the Witchy Cat Tarot by Dame Darcy, it's definitely a lot like that. Um, it's got this gold gilding, and it's sort of like a smooth semi-gloss, I suppose, um, cardstock. I'm trying to think of like a mass market that would be similar to this. I guess the Shadowland Tarot is sort of similar to this, but um, this one is just like slightly higher quality, I would say, or at least the gilding is slightly higher quality because it does not really... Personally, it doesn't cut into my hands in the same way that Shadowland does. But anyway, those are, those are specs. It's pretty standard, I suppose, in, in terms of um, tarot decks in that way. But what is not standard is how lovely and wonderful and just um, how many happy memories that this tarot deck brings. So I'm just going to start flipping through it. This is the Fool. Okay, that's like a good enough, good enough spot. <laughs> this is the Fool. Um, the whole deck is done in watercolor like this with a few little ink lines and it's so pretty. I'll get into the art a little bit more here, but I, you know, I could probably talk about this for a really long time just because it's bringing up a lot of, a lot of memories for me. I wanted to jump to the magician here because this magician really made me perk up when I first saw the flip through where, you know, of course I liked the deck enough to click on it in the first place. And I looked at the fool and I was like, yeah, that fool's pretty good. And then I look at the magician. And I was like, Oh, 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 it's so cool. <laughs> and you definitely get the Southwest feeling here where it just, it definitely takes place in the Southwest. You even have the little, um, what are these called? Like the, the strat, stratations, stratations, um, you know, the little, um, pieces of sedimentary rock where you can see the layers. And that's how you can tell that this person knows the Southwest because even in just sort of the red rock backgrounds, they've got these little blue green lines through it. It's like, oh, it's so perfect. Exactly what the Southwest is like. Here is the High Priestess. I also just especially like this High Priestess uh, because the uh, High Priestess has the Venus sign, and I personally associate Venus with the High Priestess, not with the Empress. Um, I associate the Earth with the Empress and Venus with the High Priestess. And I just really like the just brightness and happiness in this particular High Priestess card. Um, I sort of have a video, I have a video where I talk about my changes to the astrological associations for the Major Arcana, and I will link that because I talk a lot more about my change um, between Venus and the Empress and the High Priestess and all that. So I just, that was like really special and it felt like, oh man, yeah, this deck is definitely for me <laughs> when I saw that. Um, I also, I'll point out real quick that, as you can tell, the um, cats in this deck are sometimes anthropomorphized, sometimes interacting with more human things, and sometimes they're just regular cats, which I like. Uh, Witchy Cat does that too, and I, I like that very much. Here is the Empress. So cool and pretty and light and, and happy, and I just like it very much. Okay, so I wanted to sort of talk a little about the art just in general, is that it's done using these watercolors, and something that I really like about this deck is how it definitely uses the medium. It works with it in in a way that allows the watercolors to do their own thing. You can see how the watercolors have their own little spread outs, um, and their own little mixings and blendings and dark spots and light spots that is really coming from interacting with the watercolor and allowing it to to do its thing and not um, being hyper detailed with it. That's definitely something that I have a tendency to do. And I like hyper detailed watercolor art. It's very impressive. But I guess this just feels very relaxing in that way. Here is the Emperor. I really like also how this deck has other influences where... It does not feel like a stereotype of the Southwest, and it doesn't feel 
just like everything that you can think about the Southwest kind of crammed into a deck. I do kind of like that sometimes. The um, Desert Illuminations Tarot is really cool in the way that it incorporates a lot of sort of kitschy <laughs> elements of the Southwest, and so I like that too. But this feel this I guess feels a lot more personal to me because it um, incorporates many many influences, and many other aspects that sort of happen to take place in the Southwest, if that makes sense. And here's the Hierophant. <laughs> so cute. I love this bright red. I really do. This is probably the brightest color in the whole deck. I really like it. Here are the lovers. Yeah. Um, so I guess I think why, the reason why in particular I like the way that the watercolor spreads out and the, the artist has definitely worked with the watercolor is because that to me just reminds me of living in the Southwest and what the, what life in the Southwest looks like in that there's like a special relationship with the, with the outdoors and with the land because, um, I guess it just feels like because the temperature can get to such extremes, you can't really ignore the outside. <laughs> like you are, you are very constantly aware of um, the amount of water that you have or that you're using and about the temperature outside and inside and about the change from the, you know, blistering heat to the freezing cold and all of this stuff. And so everything in the Southwest, um, it's flavored by the environment. Uh, like the best buildings are the ones that are built to know, built knowing and accommodating the weather. And, um, you sort of have a lot of buildings and things that are colored the same, similar colors to the natural rocks and areas around it, because it, um, doing so it sort of helps regulate temperature in a particular way. And it's sort of like, it's, it's spread its way through artistic influence and, um, just, just ev everyday life in the Southwest. And I feel like the, the way of using the watercolor as it is and really incorporating that into the artwork captures that essence, <laughs> I suppose, of like working with, the Southwest, working with the environment and really being a part of it. Okay. So this, this, um, <laughs> this card, what I really like about it is like the shape of this cat's head feels so familiar, like the artistic shape in this. And I will show you exactly what I mean is that when I was growing up, we had a lot of those cat um, little statues or, or art that included cats that kind of looked like this shape. Um, and I don't even know what you would call this style. I don't even know how you would search for this sort of thing, but like soapstone cats, that sort of thing. And I feel like it's, it's probably best explained just by showing you this little thing that I have. Um, this is a little cat, um, just like a little wooden statue <laughs> that is painted that I have of this cat and like this shape of the face and like this particular style and this pattern and this color like is such a particular cat style and if you know you know I'll try to include a couple other pictures up here so that you can kind of see what I mean but like the something about that shape and something about this um like way of depicting cats feels so perfectly done in this uh tarot deck where they they kind of look they look the same you know they <laughs> they look like they could be siblings like you have you have the influence i guess in the tarot deck artwork of this style of like folk art depicting cats from the southwest <laughs> i don't even know how else to describe it yeah but I really love that. And that's just sort of another way in which it feels super familiar and accessible to me um, 
in in how I grew up, both the places that I grew up and the depictions and the art styles and the colors that I'm used to seeing are all here. And so that's what really helps it to evoke this um, nostalgia, I guess, and, and helps me to, I don't know, bring a little bit of the Southwest here. <laughs> These purple mountains, like, that is so common in Colorado artwork and Southwest artwork, and and it it really does look like that at sunset in Colorado. It looks very, very purple. I really love also here in the Devil the these cat wings. They sort of look like um, snow capped mountains. This is probably a little bit more what I'm used to seeing is snow capped mountains in the background, um, as opposed to sort of the desert. Um, desert, uh, sedimentary formations and that sort of thing. Oh man. I love having the, the, the tower as a cat tree, as a cat tower. <laughs> and again, you have that sort of, you have that cat shape. <laughs> it's, it's a very particular shape and it's a very particular set of colors. That's the other thing is like, like, this set of colors, I don't know, I don't know how to do it. It's not neon, but it is bright. And neon is sometimes a part of the, uh, of the Southwest art style. But it's like, there's a very particular set of colors, um, that you see in the Southwest and in Southwest inspired artwork. It's something that I've really been wanting to draw and, and do more Southwest, um, Southwest inspired artwork. And it's like, I don't know, somehow that particular set of colors is just like really hard for me to grasp. And this deck does it so perfectly. <laughs> like there's no doubt of where this takes place. I also really love how judgment is bringing rain because if you've been in a desert ever, um, you can see, you can really tell how everything is just like all, all, rocky and red and and then as soon as you get this rainstorm you just get this explosion of greenery and flowers that happens from all of these plants that were living dormant until they got a, a big wash of water um there's a there's kind of a lot of thunderstorms in in the southwest and deserts or at least where i was from ah oh, it's so pretty I really love this two of wands having the uh, the earth on the ball of yarn too. <laughs> it's like all of these backgrounds, they're just they're so familiar and so friendly to me. I love the kind of nerves in the three of wands here, and how they're definitely you know they are paint brushes. I love this four of wands. Look how sweet it is. <laughs> Oh man, have you ever, have any of you ever, um, been camping in a, um, pitch tent, you know, like a, a tent where you just sort of, you, you put a little string between two trees and then you just drape something over it. Those are so cool. Oh man, bonfires, such a desert thing. And just the colors here are so familiar just the pitch black sky and then these bright saturated purpley blue mountains definitely familiar man i really like this one oh like and and again it like you have these parts that are like these eastery pastels but they're just incorporated so perfectly i am i am I'm so inspired by this. Oh man, look at this balancing of the Seven of Wands. I really love it. Okay, I got a... This Eight of Wands is one of my favorite Eights of Wands ever. I I don't like the Eight of Wands usually because I just think it's boring. But this one is so... Um, it feels so real of like you're... I don't know. Like, oh, okay, maybe it's just because it, it it feels familiar to me, but, like, we definitely, a lot of people would 
build their own little um, ladders to climb up onto the roof just out of wood and or they'd have little fences that are sort of built out of sticks and logs and that sort of thing that are either tied on or you know you just cut a notch in and you put the put them together sort of like Lincoln logs so this definitely <laughs> is like a familiar a familiar sight I guess <laughs> in a really interesting way This is definitely sort of a flagstaff feeling to me of of having forest in the desert. <laughs> really like that. And then look at all this. <laughs> look at this cat just like overwhelmed by all of these mice of like, I don't know, having them or wanting to hunt them or not wanting to hunt them. It's just like too many things, too many opportunities, too many things all vying for your attention. Ugh. Love it. Yeah. So, I guess what what this whole thing reminds me of, and I, I forgot to mention, like, the other thing that I really like about this being in watercolor is that when I was in middle school, I went on a trip to Taos with my school. And my school was, like, an alternative school. And as part of the requirements for moving from middle school to high school or high school to graduation, uh, you had to go on a trip. And they had lots of trips that were through the school. Um, some of them were international trips and some of them were closer to home. We also had a trip fund and the, the school would fundraise a lot for the kids who wouldn't be able to afford to go on a trip. We'd do fundraisers and then they'd be able to go on the trip. So anyway, I went on a trip uh, with my school to Taos, New Mexico, and it was a watercolor trip where it was part of an art class, and we would we we piled up into the bus and we drove down to Taos, and we stayed in like this youth hostel that had this big pretty mural on the side, and we got up before sunrise, and we would go out into the middle of the desert and just like paint the sunrise. Um, we went to a bunch of spots where Georgia O'Keeffe did her artwork and um it was just so lovely and so pretty and we would just like go around and bring our little travel watercolor sets and just plop down and paint and it was so it was so fun and and so memorable and so just like I have like a very particularly strong association of watercolor and Taos New Mexico because of that trip um and the way that I usually did my watercolors is I would do watercolor for sort of the loose shapes like this, and then I would take a pen and I would draw over it to sort of emphasize certain parts of it. And so that also reminds me, you know, you've got the, the watercolor colors and then the pen that has the more defined outlines on some portions of it. Yeah, so that's just sort of another another element, I guess, of this deck that feels nostalgic to me. Oh man, man, oh man, all of the cacti in this deck too are so sweet, so familiar. We had a whole bunch of cacti in little pots that just sat out sort of on our front, well, not really a porch, but like our front entrance. <laughs> um, yeah, love that very much. I also really like how the patterns don't necessarily feel particularly Southwestern on their own, um, but they are. <laughs> and if you know, you know. <laughs> oh man. I also think it's kind of interesting how the Ten of Cups here has a cat by themselves. I really like that. And this page. I love this page of cups. This is me in this deck. And it's got this big old patch on their little... Um, robe, poncho, and it's just like, ugh. I love these colors too. It's got, it's got really bright colors, but they feel so comfortable. Like the, the turquoise and the yellow and everything, but it's just incorporated so well. Ugh, I love this page. Love this night too. Love the lion tail. Super great. Um, yeah. I feel like I had another little story that I wanted to, that I wanted to tell. Oh, yeah, um, so one time, another Taos story is that 
Um, I was just, it was during spring break and I just randomly decided that I wanted to go somewhere. And so I called up my best friend who also wasn't really doing anything. Oh man, really quick. Let me, let me put a pause button on that story because I really love the blue camping mug here with all these white little dots. They're like these mugs that are made out of metal that are specifically designed for while you go camping. And they, they look exactly like this. <laughs> And so we went camping a lot, and so that's another thing that's like, oh yeah, oh that, and it just feels very homey and very comfortable. Okay, so my my Tao story, my other Tao story <laughs> is that, you know, one time just randomly decided to, like, call up my friend and be like, hey, do you want to just go to Taos? And so we just got in the car, and we went down there, and we stayed in a youth hostel, and we did all of the tacky tourist shit, too, of, like, we were driving down there, and there was, like, a an alligator farm or something. I don't know if farm is quite the right word, but, you know, it's like a tourist destination where they had alligators, and you could go and just look at the alligators and um, hold a little baby alligator and... <laughs> So, like, we just went down there, stopped at, like, UFO cafes and shit. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, like, it. it's just so... It's so special. I really like this Six of Swords, too. And I think what I especially like about it is that, like I was saying, Thunderstorm's very evocative and very... You know, I think part of it is because you see this big vista, and so you can really see every aspect of the clouds, and you can see thunderstorms from really, really far away, um, which is really cool. But also what I like about this one is that um, it's got the uh, window frame painted. It's got a painted window frame in a bright color, and that is so quintessentially southwest and very Coloradan as well, of having these very bright, colorful window frames um, and doors too. That's not something that I really see out here in the Northeast at all. Um, maybe you'd get red. That's about it. <laughs> but you get like bright pink, bright turquoise, bright yellow. You get all these different colors on window frames. This is sort of, this is very familiar to me too, of these very big green foothills. Um, definitely one of those things is like, it's brown, 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 and then after some, a couple of thunderstorms in the sp late spring, um, you get this bright green. <laughs> oh, this poor little calico. Oh, and especially like with these in the background being like the mountains, or even just like the Denver International Airport, <laughs> which definitely looks exactly like this. Oh man. These are just so homey. Really love this Knight of Swords too. The we had a lot of cats. That's the other thing. It's like we had cats growing up and we had a lot of strays that we would either feed and then they were sort of a varying levels of comfort with us. Some of them would warm up very well and just end up living inside and some of them they just kind of came came around for some food and then left. Um and so a lot of them were tom cats who had battle scars and got got in fights with themselves or with you know among each other or or with uh wild animals and that sort of thing. Um, so this feels very familiar. I love this Queen of Swords! This Libra, this for the Libra card is just so perfect of like this, this just desert witch reading this book. <laughs> I just really, really like that. But yeah, we had some cats that, uh, we had kittens that were born under our porch I think, uh, you know, twice at least, a couple, couple times. And we also tried to do um, catch and spay, where you trap trap a stray cat, the vets in the area will spay it for free or neuter it for free, and then we'll, you know, release it back out to help reduce overpopulation. But sometimes you catch them a little bit too late, and they already have kittens. So we had a couple of times where kittens were, uh, we were sort of raising kittens where like we brought the kittens inside to try and get the mom to come inside. Mom would come inside and then we would help take care of them to make sure that they didn't freeze to death. Yeah. And then adopt them out, like basically foster the kittens until they were old enough to be adopted. 
And now this next one. This cat. This card. Seriously, like, when I first saw it in the flip through, I just had to pause and cry for a second because this is so familiar and loving and comfortable and this just feels like I I don't even know how to describe it. I really love this um Yeah, the scene is very familiar. The murals everywhere feels very familiar and these these murals that are like a celebration of the of the natural area and of the outside and like the you have the sort of special integration between the buildings and the and the outside world where you have these murals and um the buildings themselves are sort of colored the same colors as the rocks in the area and everything just feels like such a special artistic integration and like I don't know I really really love this so much and I've definitely had a lot of fantasies about just kind of living in the southwest and being a painter and being an artist in the southwest and I know I can be an artist anywhere but you know it feels very feels this this image feels very at home for me I mean a lot of these do I've kind of been saying that is that a lot of these feel right. Oh, one thing I really like about the pentacles too is how the pentacle is often one of the pentacles is often the sun or the moon or some something out in nature. And so it's like this incorporation of nature and everything else. <laughs> oh man. I really love these Pueblo buildings too. You do not see those out here. <laughs> they are very common out in the southwest. And it's, 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 they're common in the Southwest because they, they work, because they are efficient, because they are appropriate for the sort of temperatures that you see out there. They, like, stay cool, but they don't freeze, and, um, like, it, it, it's built very intentionally, um, and it works very well for the area. This is a very Colorado image to me, too, <laughs> of the very, the green foothills and... Oh my gosh, look at these kitty cats offering these little cat toys. They're so loving. So beautiful. I love this one too. I love peaches. Peaches are probably my favorite fruit. I used to eat just cans of peaches straight out of the can. Because, um, you know, it was a little bit hard for us to get fresh peaches. Um, just for a lot of reasons. <laughs> but I definitely remember canned peaches. I also, I love the Eight of Pentacles being this loom. It's just, it's sort of, it's a similar flow state, I guess, of the of the carving and sort of a similar expression in, in how long it takes and how detailed it is, but um, just a little different. And this feels a lot more familiar to me. I definitely, you know, it was a common activity that you'd... Um, you know how, like, when you're... Sometimes you do field trips to the fire department or something, to the fire station, and you learn about that. Like, we would have field trips where we would go to see local artists, and they would do pottery, or we would go to, like, an art studio. They would have pottery, they would have looming, that sort of thing, and then they would usually give you some lump of clay to play with and make something yourself, or they would give you a little baby loom to, you know, weave something for the first time, and... um yeah, I guess just like learning these, the getting to getting to play with these traditional handicrafts um, is during field trips is something that this reminds me a lot of. I love this Nine of Pentacles. I really, really love how they have this tortoise shell who has the same colors and sort of similar patterns who to the um, mesas and to the uh, sedimentary formations in the background. And also these big blue mountains in the background, just... Oh, man. I love this 10. I kind of really like how the baby kitten, like the younger one, it looks a lot more cat-like, and then these two are more anthro. And it kind of reminds me, if any of you watch Bluey, <laughs> of, of how they have, like, the little baby puppies who are, you know, from birth to 
two or three years old, and then they slowly become more anthropomorphized as they grow up. <laughs> I just really like that. Yeah. Such a sweet, lovely deck. It means so much to me, and I think this is just exactly what I needed to um, bring a little piece of the Southwest into now me living in the direct opposite in the Northeast, <laughs> you know. Here we are with the king. Yep. So, once again, this is the Tarot Cats by Bunny D. I got it on Etsy. I'll put a link down. And the last thing that I wanted to do is, um, and sort of another thing that just makes this deck, like, oh, super special for me, is that, um, it pairs so, so beautifully with my favorite Oracle deck, the Oracle of the Radiant Sun. And so I'm going to pull out a couple of the cards that I had, um, in a, uh, in a reading. Come on. What was it? It was the, yeah, okay. So I had the Ace of Cups and the World come up as I was doing a an Advice from the Planets thing for the latest, um, for the latest full moon. And so these are the cards that I had. I had um, Jupiter in Libra and the Moon in Libra. And it paired with these two, the Ace of Cups and the World, and just the colors are so perfect and beautiful, and they, they like, mesh with each other without distracting from each other, and I, I'm not even usually a person who makes, who pairs Oracle and Tarot that often. I usually just kind of use it all, use, use one deck at a time, but, like, these, these two, it just, I just, you know, the reason that I ended up pulling it was just because I recently had the tarot cats and so I wanted to play with it and even though I wanted to do the sort of structured um you know structured oracle reading of the oracle of the radiant sun I was like well I'm gonna pull some tarot too and I pulled these and it's like oh it's just so perfect together it's so beautiful I love it so much yep yeah, so I definitely needed this deck <laughs> for this moment in my life and for being able to remember and and love and appreciate all the good parts of my childhood and all the good parts of where I used to live and um you know fulfill that sense of longing um while still loving and appreciating where I live now. So that's why this is special to me. I definitely recommend that you give the Tarot Cats by Bunny D a try, and I will see you later. Bye.